Strings are a common element, a very recurrent element in questions and statics, and that is what we are going to be doing today. So we have a question in front of us, which is similar to the one we covered in the video on free body diagrams. The only addition is an upward force F. We're going to be solving for the string tension T1. So the first step that we do is we make a free body diagram. We make an isolation volume around this 10 kg object. We make a cut over here where the string is passing through the isolation volume and we draw the 10 kg object over here. Now drawing all the forces on it, there's an upward force F which we can see. There's the force of gravity acting downwards which is 10 kg into 10 meter per second square which is 100 newtons. And finally since we've cut the string over here, there's an upward force of T1 newtons. Now what we need to see, how do we decide whether this arrow will be upwards or this arrow will be downwards? The way we decide is now this isolation volume, this is the interior of the isolation volume. The tension in the string whenever it is cut is always going away from this volume. It's going outwards, which in this case is the upward direction since the upward direction is going outwards at this point. And hence, in this case, our tension is upwards. Now it's just a matter of balancing forces. So T1 plus F is equal to 100 newtons which gives T1 is equal to 100 newtons minus F. Now we've already seen the direction of the tension. The other thing is once we have taken this as the direction, the tension should always be positive. If the tension is negative, that means the string is under compression, which is not possible. Strings can only stay stable under tension. If they're under compression, they just buckle. So if we put the condition that T1 should be greater than zero, condition T1 should be greater than zero, this translates to 100 minus F greater than zero, which is removing the Newton, which says that F should be less than 100. Now, if you want to interpret this physically, as long as F is less than 100, this force is insufficient to balance the weight of the object. Hence, we need a tension in the string to balance the weight. As long as F is greater than 100, this force itself is sufficient to balance the weight and whatever excess force cannot be opposed by the string since the string cannot take compression and hence the weight will simply move upwards. This is also very physically intuitive. So here we've taken the two things, seen the two things that are important. One, the direction in which we have to draw the tension. Two, the magnitude of the tension should always be positive. Now let's take a slightly more involved question. This question has three strings. The first is a string on which you have your 10 kg object hanging. The second string is this one at an angle of 30 degrees. And the third string is this one at an angle of 45 degrees. Our purpose is to calculate T1, T2 and T3. So again, following the drill, we draw an isolation volume around the 10 kg object, draw it outside, and draw all the forces on it. So one force is downwards, 100 newtons, which is gravity, and the other force is upwards, which is T1. Again, reiterating, we have the isolation volume and hence T1 should be outwards, which is upwards in this case. So balancing forces, T1 minus 100 is equal to zero. So T1 is equal to 100 newtons. Now we've solved for T1. How do we solve for T2 and T3? The answer is simple. We'll have to make another isolation volume, but not around the 10 kg object, but this time around this joint. So we make one cut here, one cut here, one cut here, and just join these. And this is our isolation volume. And we have to make three cuts. One cut is over here, over here, and over here. So drawing this section of the ropes, This, this is the cut section. So 
since we've cut this section over here, we have to draw tension. We have to draw force due to tension and the outward direction is downwards. So we have a downwards force equivalent to T1. Similarly over here, since we've cut, we need to show a ten force due to tension. Outwards direction is like this. So we show T2 and in a similar vein T3. And of course our angles which are 30 degrees and 45 degrees still hold to 30 degrees. Now all we need to do is we need now we need to solve for T3 and T2 and we have two solution two equations to solve for them. One is the vertical force balance and second is the horizontal force balance. So carrying out the vertical force balance first the vertical component of T3 is P3 sine 45 degrees plus the vertical component of T2 is T2 sine 30 degrees plus the vertical component of T1 is minus T1 which is equal to minus 100 newtons is equal to 0 which gives T3 sine 45 degrees plus T2 sine 30 degrees is equal to 100. Secondly, horizontal force balance. The horizontal component of T3 is T3 cos 45 degrees. Since it's pointing to the left, there's a negative sign involved. So minus T3 cos 45 degrees plus the horizontal component of T2 is T2 cos 30 degrees and it's positive is equal to 0. Simplifying this T3 cos 45 degrees is equal to T2 cos 30 degrees. Now we have two equations and two variables. The first equation is this one. The second equation is this one. We know the value of sine 45 degrees, sine 30 degrees, cos 45 degrees, cos 30 degrees and the unknowns are T3, T2, T3, T2 and since there are two unknowns and two equations, we can solve for T3 and T2. So this is how we solve for problems with strings. We first make an isolation volume. Wherever there are cuts, we have to replace it with forces uh, because of tension. The force vector has to be outwards of outwards of the isolation volume and the tension can never be negative. In the, in the case of such problems, we can make two isolation volumes, one isolation volume around the object and another one at this joint. Please pause this video and solve this small question both for your benefit and so that we can test the efficiency of this video.